so you can see we've taken this off now and you can see in the wood here you can see it's rotten on the top it hasn't got any worse that's one thing it was like this last year so um, like I say I poured this resin stuff in it it has hardened it further down the top is still obviously breaking but it has worked this isn't bad this is still quite good wood obviously it's not great and here's not bad here's not bad here's where it sort of gets not good probably find that the same there it's probably to do with the water running down these edges getting underneath so well, like I say I put that on which stopped it for this year so we're going to cut out this have a look at the wood from that side and basically just scarf in a new piece along there put this on because I don't like fiberglass dust in fact I might even get gloves let me just see how this is gonna let's just check how um Gonna go and get a chisel. Now, as you can see, you can see this is where the rot is. It's mainly on these corners. Like I said, it's where the water's been coming down here and going through the join. It's rotted that. So I'm gonna cut it back a couple of inches further back either side, the fiberglass. Then I'm gonna take this out. Although this is still it's still pretty solid. I mean I did put that resin in. Um, cut it right down to the bottom part put a new piece in there fiberglass this whole seat with a few layers to strengthen the whole seat so it because originally the seat's got wood underneath it but the wood is going in the middle here so I'm gonna do it so it doesn't actually need the wood so it's strong enough without it and then bring the fiberglass up up over the top again like it was uh, and then on the back of this one centimetre thick fibreglass boat. I'm going to put that brand new piece that we cut out, that great big um, piece of marine plywood, which will cover the whole back, and that will make the back nice and strong. And hopefully, that'll be that for however long, for the next many years. But like I say, this isn't too bad. I mean, it's still super strong. I mean, it's still really strong. But, you know, it is what it is, and I'm not happy with it, so I want to get it done now before it gets too far. And before the rot goes too far as well, I don't want it rotting further down. So, like I say, I've cut it out. What I'll also do is, once I've cut it, I'm going to get that resin, the uh, wood hardener, and I'm going to soak it in the actual ply all the way along into the piece below, so that hardens that up and protects it from moisture and that kind of thing as well. off the layers
today I'm actually cutting a piece of wood here. This is for the um, stern of the boat on the inside. This is a piece that goes on the inside. Um, it'll be fiberglassed over so it doesn't have to be pretty. But this is actually the plank of wood I hauled out to sea this summer. This big old plank that was, obviously I've chopped the end off. You can see there it's actually really good inside. It was sitting out in the garden all, all winter. But it looks like it's beech or something like that. So it's very, very hard, I know that. But this will be ideal. We'll use this. What I'll do is I will cut it square. I've got to cut it square, so it's got a curve on it. Cut it square, then thin it. I've got to thin, take it down. I've got the plane there, but there, there's a problem with it, I think. The plane, it, um, I need to look at it first. So I'll probably just run it down the saw because it's not going to be that wide, the wood, anyway. So. And then that will go in the boat and be five glassed over. You'll see it when I put it in. So it looks like good wood. I mean, even that thin bit, look. Right. Just trying to make it square because I took off the piece at the end, which is really curved. I thought I'll use that up because I can cut a square, like square it up. Anyway. Let's take a look outside this bit of wood. So this is um, pretty sure it's beach, but boy is it hard. It's a nice bit of wood. Now, so it just shows how you find it in the ocean, and that that will be super strong for the for the back of the boat. Now you can you can see the saw struggled a little bit with that one, but that's because it's um, I've got the old saw in there. We're using it to chop up bits of firewood, and that's uh, um, that's why the old blade was in. The other one cuts a bit rougher as well. I need to actually go out and get a new blade from somewhere. Let's have a look. I'm not going to be doing much today on the boat because it is supposed to be another wet day. But tomorrow and the next few days we should be good. Now this, this is going to be a bit big. I've made it big so I can just trim it. As you can see, me and fiberglass dust don't mix well. Not a fan of it. Irritates too much. So, I cover up. Okay. It's done. Now you can see it's all been carved up, drilled holes into it, just into the wood parts, so it keys in nice. You get a real good key on that. And I just need to wash it all with acetone, get it all nice and clean, get rid of any dirt, and it'll be ready for fiberglassing in the morning. Right, so I've put the plate in. When I was waiting around for it to dry, I put a couple of stainless plates which slide under either side. See here as well. Just to spread the force a little bit. But I mean that is very strong. And once it's got its piece here as well, and then fiberglassed over, which is tomorrow. Or for you in a minute. Fiberglass, lots of fiberglass. 
this is the coarse stuff this stuff actually isn't isn't fiberglass but it's really good for going over the joins and making it smooth and that although i've got a thinner grade fiberglass i'm going to go and get so not my favorite job but it's got to be done so roller get rid of the bubbles and now we just need to go and get the resin and all the rest so resin mixing bucket brushes bottle of acetone or half a bottle of acetone this is the fine mesh which will go on on top of the coarse mesh at the end just to give it a nicer finish and of course some catalyst for the resin um, now the interesting bit, I've actually got to put this bit of wood on first as well on the back here before I fibre, so I want to fibre up and over this so this doesn't get water going down onto the wood again um, Now we've got our board here for the back. As you'll see, it's now I resined, like I said yesterday, this bit of white is because I when I took it into the shed in the evening, then obviously it was getting starting to get damp, so it got a little bit of white on it, but it won't affect it. This is just to go when the wood it, it goes against there to stop it getting any water. If any water comes up between it, it won't lie there and rot the wood, it'll hopefully repel the water. And then the outside, all I'm going to do is just wax it like I do with the gunnels and that. So. Need a longer drill bit, really. Let's see how far we go. Yeah, that's good. I don't want this wood to split, that's why I'm drilling um, this one so far. Do it. I think going up. Whew. Nice. That's what it looks like from the back. Like I say, it's much bigger than the other one was, but that's fine. So we've got our top for mixing, and this is about one and a half litres I think. So the mixture is, I think it's five, so, but I don't want it going off fast. Obviously if you, um, if it goes off too quick and you're half finished then you're knackered because it will suddenly go into a gel and then go obviously hard, so it can take longer if need be. The thing is, it will set eventually, even if you only put a little bit in. But putting too much in, no, it's not good. And not only that, it gets hot, and it can get very hot if you put way too much in. Right. Two, three, that should do it. Might have been a little bit more than I need, but hopefully. And then make sure you stir it up well.
Right, so the first two layers can done. Uh, it's starting to set now, so I'm gonna leave it, and then I'm gonna put the next layer on, and it'll just be ready for the gel coat. Well, I say ready, it'll probably be tomorrow I'll gel coat it, but we'll see how we get on. There we go, that's it for now. I've um, given it two coats, as you saw, of the coarse mat, one fine mat. Um, gonna let it all set off now till tomorrow. Hopefully we'll get another day, or at least a morning tomorrow. And then I'm gonna need to give it a quick sand over, get off any rough bits along the edge, and gel coat it all. Hopefully we can fit that in, but we managed to get it in while the weather's dry. This is what I've been trying to get around to doing for the last, I don't know, since last September. And, on the next video, we've got toys to install. Plus, obviously, we will gel coat this. This video is going to go up tonight, so I haven't got, obviously, time to finish this now. But, um, plenty more to do. Like I said, I've got to sort all that out, sort all that out. Got all the floors to do. Got to finish off the pump. Got to sort out these cuddies. I don't know if you can see there's a bit of rot in the corners. But I've been packing it with uh, fiberglass and resin, so I'm going to harden all that up. Yeah, and hopefully... We'll be back on course to get this boat down again. And of course we've got other things to do like quick quick anti-foul and quick polish clean up on the outside, paint the numbers back on the boat. They've got to go back on and uh, yeah. I've sorted all my safety equipment out now, now all the new stuff, so. We are getting there. Let's just hope the weather calms down. I think it's supposed to go a bit iffy again, but hopefully after that we might get some weather. <laughs>